Being rejected again was so hard to take. Having that alongside my dissertation, all of the stress from you know everything in university really, really broke me. I pretty much like completely convinced myself that medicine was just not gonna happen. What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time watching one of my videos, but in case it is, I am a third year medical student studying at King's College London. And a lot of you guys will know that uh, my first ever video that I ever posted was about my story about how I got into medical school without the best grades. And that wasn't a clickbait title, that was honestly the truth. Um, I didn't get the best grades uh, and I finally got into medical school. And that was a while ago. I think that video was posted maybe two years ago. And since then I've gained over 7,000 subscribers and I realized that a lot of you may not actually know my story about how I got into medical school. So I thought I'd tell you guys my story again, add some pictures, maybe a few videos as well, uh, and tell all the newcomers um, about my story about how I got into medical school. And if you have seen my last video about um, how I did, um, I'll be giving you a bit more information and going into a bit more detail about uh, my journey into medical school. Before I do start uh, telling the story, if you could take two seconds to hit that subscribe button, I, I promise you, you will not regret it. So hit the subscribe button down below, give the video a thumbs up as well, uh, and let's go ahead and get started. So I first decided to do medicine when I was around 16 years old. Uh, before that, I actually wanted to become a scientist, and my mum told me that uh, if you become a doctor, you can actually become a scientist as well, and also help people uh, as a doctor. So when I was around 16, I decided to pursue a career in medicine, and honestly, I fell in love with it straight away. Uh, I put so much effort into getting all the work experience, um, you know, working really hard in school, to hopefully get the grades to apply to medical school. And then after that, I went to college, which in the UK is uh, year 12. So I joined year 12, again, with the hopes of, uh, you know, getting the grades to apply for medical school. The thing is though, while I was in year 12, unfortunately, uh, during my year 12 exams, I ended up getting A, A, B uh, in my A-levels. So I think I got A in maths, uh, A in biology, but B in chemistry. And because of that, my predictions for year 13 in school ended up being A star, A, B. And like, don't get me wrong, those are absolutely amazing grades. Really well done if you got those grades as well. But unfortunately, to get into medical school, no one in my school um, at that time had gotten an offer previously uh, with a B prediction in chemistry. So because of that, I honestly still remember the day that I got those grades. I was so sad. I stayed in bed all day. It was honestly such a tough period for me. I remember on results day, uh, going to my uh, teachers, going to my uh, my careers advisors and asking them, is there any way at all that I could possibly apply to medical school? You know, I've got A star, AB. Is there any way possible? And they all said to me like, don't even try, don't even bother. It's not gonna happen. I remember also going to my chemistry teacher and asking them to please, like literally begging them to please increase my prediction from a B to an A. And they literally said like, sorry, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, these are the grades you got and this is all we can predict to you. Um, then I remember asking my biology teachers, asking them, is there any way that I can get into medical school uh, as a graduate? You know, what if I did biomedical science first and then entered medical school as a graduate? And literally all of them told me like, that's it's gonna to take too long, it's even more competitive, and it's gonna cost you a lot of money, so just completely forget that idea. So I was really upset for a while, um, and then obviously the time kind of came where I had to decide what I wanted to do for university. So at that time, I honestly didn't care like what I wanted to do. I didn't get the grades to even apply for medical school, so I ended up applying for a random degree, uh, which is biology. So I sent off my application to university and I applied to biology. I didn't even want to do biology, but I just was so shattered and so like upset about not getting into medical school that I didn't even care. So I sent off my application for biology and I ended up getting offers uh, for biology. So I got four offers from four different universities uh, to study biology. And then a while later, I ended up um, actually discovering this degree called biomedical science, uh, which sounded a lot more similar to what I wanted to do in the future, uh, if not medicine. So I ended up emailing all of the universities being like, please, please, I don't want to do biology. Could you please transfer my application to biomedical science? And all of the universities got back to me uh, saying, yeah, sure, like no worries, we'll transfer you to biomedical science. So I finally graduated from college. I finished off year 13 and then I was straight off to university. So university started and things went really well, you know, things were going really smoothly. Um, at this time, I still was quite upset about not getting into medical school. So I was just kind of like, you know, getting a feel for biomedical science and not worrying too much about medicine. The really amazing thing is that biomedical science at the University of Birmingham, which is where I went to, uh, was taught in medical school. I also played football for medical school. Uh, so a lot of my friends ended up being medics, uh, ended up being medical students. And the fact that it was taught in medical school and I was surrounded by medical students kind of you know reignited my passion and uh, my motivation to hopefully apply for medical school. So when I started biomedical science, I started really enjoying it and I got my motivation back to you know want to pursue uh, medicine. So while I was in biomed, I honestly worked like harder than I've ever worked in my life. You know, I literally sat down and I said to myself, if I'm gonna pursue medicine, if this is the decision I'm gonna do, then I'm gonna do it with 100% you know, strength and 100% motivation, like there's no backing down. So I worked extremely hard you know, for all of my in-course assessments, you know, for my exams, 
I sacrificed so much, you know, I honestly put in so much effort and so much work into getting into medicine. Um, and then by the time um, first year came to an end, I started realizing that, you know what, I'm actually getting pretty good grades. So second year came around um, in biomed and, um, you know, the year started off really well. I continued to make amazing friends, have amazing times and, you know, things started to get more serious. Second year was a year that actually counted for us and actually counted to our degree. So again, I stepped up my work ethic. I stepped up how hard I actually worked. And again, you know, my grades slowly started climbing, uh, slowly started becoming, you know, good enough for medicine. And I started realizing like, you know what, this medicine plan could actually, you know, come into fruition. This could actually be a thing. So throughout the whole of second year, I found work experience. And then second year finally came to an end. And in my exam results, I actually got first class, uh, which I was so happy for. I then moved on to the summer of second year and I did all my work experience. You know, I talked about my work experience in a different video, so go check that out. But I did all my work experience. And then I finally started third year. And I, you know, this is when it really started becoming serious that if I want to get into medical school, I need to absolutely smash third year. I was also at the summer of my second year, before I started my third year, I sacrificed uh, literally my whole summer to do, uh, to work in a lab, do loads of research, and also um, like three or four weeks of my, of my summer to do the UK CAT. So the summer in between my second and my third year, I literally had one week of summer uh, to actually enjoy uh, enjoy summer. So third year came around and it was this point where I'd given up so much and getting into medical school is all I ever wanted and it was all I was dreaming of. I, rem I remember, you know, kind of sitting down and thinking about this and realizing that if I want to get into medical school, I'm, I'm going to have to sacrifice even more than I ever have. Uh, so in third year, I, I don't recommend doing this, but I, um, you know, I stopped going out with my friends. I stopped going clubbing with my friends. Um, I sacrificed a lot of social time with my friends. I didn't go out in the night anymore because, um, you know, over the night while my friends were going out, I'd sit down in my room and I'd work on my dissertation and I'd work on all my work in third year. So September passed, um, you know, I had fun in September with my friends. That was kind of the last month I went out with them. And then October came and during October, uh, this is when I started, you know, writing my, um, my medical school application, writing my personal statement. Things were starting to get like really, really stressful. November came and I finally sent off my, uh, my medical school application. And it was on that day that I officially became a medical school applicant. I was honestly so proud of myself, you know, just to have gotten the grades to have gone this far, you know, just to have gotten to the actual point of applying for medical school, which I never did in the past, you know, when I was in my A-levels in college, I didn't even get the grades to apply to medical school. So getting to that point of just applying to me was like the, such a big achievement. So I sent off my medical school application and the dreaded month of December came. December was really tough for me for a number of reasons. This is December of 2016. The first one being that I already knew that in January I had an interview for medicine. Um, because I was a Birmingham already, I had a guaranteed interview uh, for medicine. And um, the way that that worked is that because I was doing biomed at Birmingham, uh, they had 10 places available for the biomed students to get into medicine. There was a whole list of criteria that we had to meet. Uh, we had to work really, really hard. Uh, and they chose the 10 best applicants to get the 10 guaranteed interviews uh, for medical school. So before I even set off my uh, application to uh, medicine, I already knew that at Birmingham I had a guaranteed interview waiting for me in January. So yeah, so because of that, um, you know, it was extremely stressful. Again, for the first reason that I knew I had an interview coming up in January, I just sent off my medical school application. And thirdly, you know, third year was getting really serious, really hard. And lastly, uh, we had our dissertation. So December was honestly probably one of the hardest months of my entire life and one of the most stressful months of my entire life. January then came around and after sacrificing my whole entire Christmas to prepare for the January interview at Birmingham, I came back to Birmingham and I had my interview uh, for medicine at Birmingham. The interview, uh, honestly, on my part, I thought it went like pretty okay. And it was at this point that I also started getting rejections from other medical schools. So I applied for um, Birmingham, obviously, which I had the guaranteed interview for. I applied for Queen Mary's, for King's College London, and also Manchester. Um, so after my interview, I got two emails from Manchester and also uh, Queen Mary's basically saying that, sorry, we've had a look at your application and you've been rejected from medical school. So this was obviously very hard for me, you know, getting rejections and realizing that my chances now are even more slim was really, really hard for me. But apart from that, I continued working really, really hard on my dissertation. I was working in the labs like 12 hours a day, trying to get all of the data to write my dissertation. And at the same time, I was waiting back to hear from my uh, interview at Birmingham and also waiting to hear back from King's. And I honestly still remember the day that um, I was sat in my common room uh, in between experiments. You know, I was having lunch in the common room. Uh, I got a notification from Birmingham and I was so excited to hear back from them. Uh, so I picked up my phone went on my emails and there it was, uh, I got rejected from Birmingham as well. Although I did get rejected, uh, Birmingham said that I was second on the waiting list. They added me to the waiting list and because I was second, if two people dropped out or decided to take up an offer from a different university and not choose Birmingham, then I would go from the waiting list uh, to being given an offer. 
And yes, the rejection was hard, um, but knowing that I was second on the waiting list really meant that I had my hopes up and I was, I really believed that I was going to get the offer. So fast forward four weeks later uh, into February, I was working really hard on my dissertation again and I got another email. Uh, so this time I opened up my phone and uh, again, it was Birmingham. Um, but this time, you know, I was hoping for, you know, oh, you've been on the waiting list and lucky for you, two people have decided to choose a different university and not come to Birmingham. So we're happy to give you the offer. Well, that certainly wasn't the case. Um, I opened up my email and it was an email saying that, sorry, but you've been rejected from Birmingham completely. No one has chosen a different university. Uh, no one has dropped out so unfortunately um yeah you've been rejected basically this is honestly uh, one of the hardest days of my life you know being rejected again was so hard to take having that alongside my dissertation all of the stress from you know everything in university really really broke me like i'm not gonna lie to you that was such a hard day and like looking back as well like just now is making me uh feel really weird actually so that took a blow to me. Uh, it took me a, you know, a good two or three days to recover from that email. Although I did have you know, King's College London uh, left to hear back from, at this point, um, you know, King's being so high up as university and also it being so late in the year. It was already you know, March um, and I hadn't heard back from King's and I pretty much like completely convinced myself that medicine was just not gonna happen. I ended up like having like a mini breakdown um, I remember the day that when I realized that medicine's gonna happen, um, I actually started this whole business plan about how I wanna go back to Kenya, uh, start up a business plan. I, I even had the logo designed, like I designed a full logo for this whole business plan uh, to convince myself that if, you know, it's fine, I didn't get into medical school, but I have other options as well. So after basically you know, completely convincing myself that medicine's gonna happen, I remember being at dinner and receiving another email through my watch. You know, I got a notification on my watch and it said, um, you know, King's College London has to send you an email. And again, I was like, you know what, it's fine. I was expecting this rejection. Like I knew, I knew it was gonna be a rejection, you know? But I decided to open up my phone during dinner. I opened up my phone and it, it said, you know, beyond my belief that King's College London has invited me uh, for an interview for the five year medical course. I, and it was, I honestly can't even describe like how excited I was. I was so, I was in shock. I literally was in shock, you know? And um, after convincing myself that medicine was not gonna happen, I have an interview that is actually in five days time. What was really like scary at that time was that my dissertation was due in three days time and I'd only have two days to prepare for the King's College London interview. Although I was, you know, still working really, really hard on my dissertation, this increased my motivation like tenfold. I've never been this motivated in my life to do, you know, so, so well. So five days passed and I handed in my dissertation in Birmingham. I finally got that out of the way, you know, all the stress and all the like hard work and long nights that had gone into this dissertation were finally out of the way. I sent off my dissertation and I had two days to head back to London and prepare for my uh, interview at King's College London. I can't describe to you how hard I worked for that interview. Um, you know, I practiced every single day. It meant that it meant the entire world to me to do well in this interview. So two days passed um, after handing in my dissertation and I finally went for the um, interview at King's, which I thought went really well. Um, but again, I wasn't entirely sure because Birmingham went so well and I you know, ended up getting rejected. So I didn't really know what to think at this point. I didn't really know what to feel. Um, so the interview, you know, was done. And um, at this point, it was just a waiting game and just hear back from what King's would have to say. Uh, so over the next couple of days, I kept myself busy by revising for my final year exams, which are only, uh, you know, a couple of weeks away. And I remember um, the point where I got the offer for medicine. I was revising all day at home for my uh, final exams and I decided to take a break from revision. So I went to, into my bed, uh, I laid down for around uh, five or 10 minutes and the interview offer had finally come through. You know, I got an email on my bed, not knowing how to feel, like with my heart racing, being extremely nervous and I opened up the email and it said that you've been given an offer to study medicine on the five year course and we can't wait to have you in September. This was uh, this was the most memorable day of my life. You know, I jumped off my bed and I ran straight to the kitchen uh, and I showed my mom my phone and I, I let her read it out. I was literally like, mom, have a read, have a read of uh, what this email says. And I still remember the look that she had in her face of how proud of me she was. And literally, you know, in the space of two days from the interview, Two days later, I had the offer for studying medicine and my motivation was skyrocketed through the roof. You know, I finally had the offer that I've been waiting for for my whole entire life. All I had to do was get a, a 2-1 and I'd be accepted onto the medical program. So I worked as hard as I possibly could for my exams. You know, I went into um, my final exams, honestly, like more anxious than I have in my entire life. You know, I remember vomiting on the day of my last exam, feeling you know extremely stressed, extremely unwell. But I got the exams out of the way. I worked as hard as I possibly could. 
And I decided just to sit back and say, you know what, my exams are done now. It's all in God's hands. So a couple of weeks had passed and summer had finally started. I went to Ibiza with my friends. You know, we celebrated, finally finishing our degree. And I said to myself that no matter what happens, in the end, I know I gave 100%. I know I worked as hard as I possibly could. Results day finally came. And beyond my belief, I ended up getting a first class uh, degree in biomedical science. And my conditional offer for medicine ended up turning into an unconditional offer to start medical school in September at King's College London. So that basically is my story of how I went to medical school. But there's a few things I wanted to share with you, a few points that I actually wrote down and I wanted to talk to you guys about. The first thing I wanted to say that if you don't get the grades for medicine uh, in high school and secondary school, it's not the end of the world. There are other routes into medical school, uh, just like I did. My story is only one of the atypical ways of getting into medical school, but there are different routes. There are different doors that you can go through to get into medical school eventually. The next thing that I wanted to make abundantly clear is that to get into medical school, you honestly don't have to be the most intelligent person in the world. There is a huge like belief and a huge uh, misconception that all medical students are, you know, so intellectual, so, so smart. And that honestly isn't the truth. You know, I, I don't consider myself particularly gifted in school. I ended up getting ABB in my A-levels, as I told you. Uh, my UK cat was very average. But what you do have to be to get into medical school is extremely hardworking. You may have to be the hardest worker in the room. You don't need to be the smartest person in the room but you do have to be one of the hardest workers. And that's the second point that I wanted to say. The third point that I wanted to tell you guys is that the difference between someone who's successful and someone who isn't, isn't a lack of skill, but it's a lack of will. Again, reinforcing the point that getting into medical school isn't about how uh, skillful you are, how smart you are. It's about how hard you're willing to, to work and how much you know, you're willing to sacrifice to get what you want and get into medical school. The fourth point I wanted to mention is that it took me three extra years to get into medical school, but the beautiful thing about a degree is that there's no dates on it. I have a degree behind me, over in the corner, you can't see it, but on a degree, it doesn't say how long it took you to get that degree. You know, it may have taken someone five years to go through medical school. It's gonna take me eight years in total to get through and finally graduate as a doctor, but on a degree, there are no dates at all. So if it took someone five and took me eight, it doesn't show up anywhere. What matters really is that you eventually get there in the end. So it doesn't matter how long it takes you. What matters is that you get to your dream of being a doctor. What I also wanted to say is that everyone has their own story in life. Everyone is in their own chapter in their life and not to compare your story to someone else's. You know, some people start on level 10 and to get to level 20, which is medical school, they've only climbed, you know, 10 stories. Maybe someone at level 10, you know, have parents who are doctors. Uh, maybe they come from a very you know, privileged background. Uh, maybe, um, you know, getting to medical school wasn't entirely hard for them. So getting from level 10 up to level 20, you know, may, may not necessarily been you know, as hard for them, you know. That's not to say that they didn't work hard or put in the graft that they needed to get into medical school. That is to say that some people start on level 10 and get to level 20. In my case, and maybe in your case, you know, maybe we're at, you know, minus 10, and maybe we're gonna have to climb 30 floors, you know. At minus 10, maybe uh, you had some adversity in your life, you know, maybe you had um, someone in your life who passed away. Maybe you come from an, you know, a, a less privileged background. Maybe you don't have anyone in your whole entire family like me who went to university. Maybe you're the first person you know, in your entire family goes to university, the first dot in your family. Maybe you had to go through so much adversity and to get from minus 10 to 20, which is medical school, maybe you had to climb 30 floors, you know? And that's just to say that everyone's story is different. Everyone is at different points in their lives. Everyone is in a different chapter in their life. So don't compare yourself as hard as it might be to anyone else in the world. Stick to what you know, stick to where you're at in life and stick to how many levels you have to climb to get to where you wanna to get to. And I'm not saying it's easy. It definitely wasn't easy for me to get to medical school. It definitely wasn't easy for me to stay motivated through three years of biomed. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. You may have to work, work harder. You may have to work longer. You may have to sacrifice more. But what I can definitely promise you and honestly give you my word is that in the end, it's all worth it. Um, it's all worth the hard work that I put in to become a medical student. And I promise you that if you put in the work as well, it'll be as worth it for you as it was for me. So this has been an extremely long video. Thank you so much if you've reached this point. And that pretty much is my story, guys. You know, I hope it's given you some sort of motivation. I hope it's given you some insights into my life and what it was like for me, what I had to go through to become a medical student. As I said, it wasn't easy, but it was so worth it. And I hope that you can take something from this video and make something of it. Maybe you're in high school right now maybe um, you're in your degree maybe you got rejected if more than once more than twice for medical school but i do hope that you get there in the end if you have any comments or any questions at all feel free to contact me down below leave a comment uh, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up it really helps uh, good luck with your application good luck with your journey and i'll see you guys on the next one